we get a tinker to resolve here, it means we've tinkered for knowledge pool and Uba masks, which is a pretty good set of cards to have tinkered for. Okay, welcome back, vintage viewers. Uh, this is going to be my first stream since returning. Uh, we have a beautiful donation deck list here. Uh, the The plan is to Uba Mask combo. Now, there are actually a lot of different combos in this deck, but the main thing we're trying to do is put a Dranith Magistrate in play. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands, and then lock them out with an Uba Mask. If a player would draw a card, they exile it face up instead. Each player may play lands and cast spells from among cards they have exiled with Uba Mask. Uh, we have a variety of, of, of other things happening here as well. We have uh, Teferi, and we have Teferi with Knowledge Pool. Knowledge Pool uh, makes it so when players cast spells, they instead exile that spell and cast the one from underneath the Knowledge Pool. Um, so you can see how that can com combo here with the Dranith Magistrate. Because uh, I believe this one is cast. Yeah, cast. And also, uh, this will not be at instant speed anymore. Uh, so Teferi will stop that one from happening as well. We've got things like Spellbinder putting spells into exile and won't be able to cast them uh, with Dranith Magistrate, I should say. Uh, I don't remember how Lavinia plays into this other than being a blue human, which we can cast off of our cavern with Dranith Magistrate as well, being a human. Um... I actually think we probably will win the most number of our games by casting uncounterable Lavinias, or at least I hope that's the plan. Uh, I also have things like Twister, Narset, uh, obviously uh, Twister with, you know, uh, a mask and a Dranith Magistrate out means you can get rid of the cards that are already still in their hand that they haven't drawn yet. Um, I figure if we're playing a bunch of Teferis, we might as well play Displacer Kitten combo. With Moxon and Teferis, because we are a big uh, Moxon deck. Yes, we also have Lavinia with Knowledge Pool. Uh, she will counter the card off of <laughs> cast off of Knowledge Pool. So, lots of ways to stop our opponent from having fun, theoretically. Uh, and we'll see how that does. If this is a big blue shell, which is a bunch of fast mana. I'm, a, of course, including Crypt, uh, Lotus Petal here so that we can cast early Lavinias. I have uh, a sneaking suspicion our deck can't cast Teferi with our four Cavern of Souls, but. We sure can cast all of these humans, so who's 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 laughing now? Uh, we have Tinker for the powerful targets of Uba Mask and Knowledge Pool in game one, but I do have uh, post-board portals and sphinxes to help us in uh, bizarre and mono-white matchups. Um, besides that, just a bunch of different hate cards. I think Nolrod should be a nice little extra help against... Um, Jewel Shops, even though we do have four Lavinias, so that should be really nice against Jewel Shops as well. So, uh, this should be interesting. I, I, in theory, I can see it working. I can see some early Lavinias, some nice lockout, uh, but I am worried that we are going to get murdered. Should be fun. See you in round one. If you'd like to see your deck played on this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below, where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list. Let's battle. Okay, here we are, round one with Uba Mask. Can we have a turn one Lavinia? Uncounterable? Opponent is revealing a companion. It's probably a good sign for us. We do have a turn one Lavinia, not uncounterable. And then we could maybe tinker for knowledge pool on turn two. So... Uh... Doing it? I believe that would be doing it. If our Lavinia resolves and we untap and then resolve a Tinker for Knowledge Pool, imagine. That would be a great way to start this video. Um, I am going to get a basic. Just because opponent's pretty likely to be on a Wasteland deck. All right, come on. First, let's resolve Lavinia, and then let's have them tap out, and then let's tinker for a knowledge pool. Even if they force the Lavinia, we have another Lavinia, so it's not the end of the world. Okay, the Lavinia has resolved. The, Lav 
<laughs> the Lavinia has resolved. Now, are they going to tap out? Because they can still have Fluster and Pyroblast, you know? Just play a Ragavan. Just play a Ragavan. What could possibly go wrong? Just a little Ragavan for fun. I think so if we resolve this tinker right they exile the top three cards of their library face down and then yeah i mean they can't do anything tap out tap out tap out tap out just play a soul guide lantern oh <gasps> that Kills my knowledge pool. You know, that is just so sad. <laughs> why, why, why would, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Ah. Uh... Man, I don't really have any way to get this off the table either. I mean, I have like Teferis and stuff, but. If only I could tinker for something else. That was not what I was hoping they would take. This this innovation from Sprouts, great card, very good in the deck. Definitely the correct call, but also, come on, man. Why you got to do this to me? Negation, Demonic, Flusterstorm, Probe, Mana Vault, Vampiric. What am I supposed to do with that information? I think we're supposed to take the vamp so they can't vamp for a land. Like, what's the vault doing? The vault doesn't really matter. Like, if they vamp for an Urza Saga, how, we, how can we ever win? We're just straight up doomed, right? Does Knowledge Pool do anything good for us? Kind of. It can give us a fresh cards to draw, like if we draw a Moxin or something. I think Vamp's the correct take. They can obviously pay for a probe with their Spire. Uh, but they will start getting clocked pretty fast here. Paying life and getting hit for five. They don't have that many lands in their deck. They have a lot more artifact mana that gets countered by Lavinia. Like, they can't really remove a Lavinia. The Lavinia won't stop them forever, but... Blue for probe, I assume. Sure. All right. Pass the turn. Okay. All right, we can... Okay, so I do think what we're going to do is tinker for Knowledge Pool. Because what we can do is cast Probe to cast a spell off our Knowledge Pool, correct? I don't think it's good to wait. And if they sack this to kill my uh, Knowledge Pool, it means they're not blocking and they're using their mana anyways. So I, I do think... Probably want to use my Academy mana... Yeah, so I'm going to tinker, and they'll probably concede before our Knowledge Pool comes into play, right? <laughs> All right, I'm going to put a Knowledge Pool into play.
Though this is kind of dangerous, right? Because now they can actually... Oh, they can't cast negation because... Lavinia, right? So never mind. I guess they can cast Mana Vault. No, no, that, that won't matter either. Never mind, never mind. All right, so we're going to see three cards. And if any of these three cards are good, we can cast our probe to cast one of our three cards. Which feels good good to me if our if we hit like Teferi or Lauren you know you know could be good not bad okay all right okay I did think that turn one Lavinia would be the best part of this deck and so far that does seem true but Our opponent is still reading the knowledge pool. All right. All right. What do we hit? What do we hit? What do we hit? Oh, I can cast spells from their deck? Oh, my God. Is that, is that true? Oh, I hit Teferi, by the way. So, cast Cataxium Probe, trigger knowledge pool, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce their Haywire Might. All right, so I'm going to get a Teferi, cast without paying, and bounce the Haywire Might. Maybe I'll draw a Moxin and I can get an Uba Mask. That'd be pretty cool. All right, all right, bounce this Haywire Might. My lord. I believe we are, in fact, doing it. This didn't take very long to, to start doing it, but we are. We are. I think they'll just concede. Like I, I think I think they'll just concede. <laughs> we are, we are. Okay, all right. So my opponent is playing the um, Lurus Turbo Volky deck. We're going to bring in Null Rod. Um, and we're going to bring in Needles. And I think that's it. And then what we'll do is take out Swords. And... Maybe we can get rid of Kitten here. And maybe we'll get rid of Twister on the draw. And maybe we'll get rid of Mystical. Yeah, those are definitely cards that are in my deck. I will hit Submit. Now they're no longer in my deck. I feel like that was about as well as a game could possibly go for us. Our opponent had a force, but it was a negation. We slammed a turn one Lavinia. And even though they had the answer for our, our turn two combo lockout, we were still able to do everything we needed to. I guess theoretically we could have had Cavern Lavinia and then it wouldn't even have been up to chance. But we did rip Sapphire. <laughs> or like, so we had Sapphire and open our hands, so we just can never, ever, ever complain. Does Draneth Magistrate help for any other part of this? No. Because it would help against, like, Root Wall of Madness. It would help against Citadel. Um, But it doesn't really help against Engineer or Luris. It, it would stop Lur It would stop Luris. If it was the old companion rule, which is kind of funny. 
I believe people were playing some amount of like one of Draneth Magistrates during the the Luris meta game. I'm pretty sure that did happen. I know that um I know that uh Brian Kelly sometimes plays a Draneth Magistrate, so there must be some other things. Tinker, Walla, uh maybe like oops all spells. Um it does stop Luris from casting from the yard. That is a fair point. That is a fair point. This hand looks good. Fast mana, probe, ancestral. I'll take it. I'll definitely take it. And breach combo. Breach combo. Also fair. All right. So it hits a couple things. That's good news. All right. City of Brass. I've never seen this art. Okay. City of Brass pass. That kind of makes me feel like Flusterstorm is happening here. Oh, I drew Lavinia. Okay. Show me your secrets. Yeah, it should stop Madness because your Madness is not from the hand. So they have Probe, Negation, Breach, Brain Freeze. Ooh. Interesting. Uh, Probe, Negation, Breach, Brain Freeze. So I want to resolve this Null Rod. I think... I still can afford to just go Tundra, Ancestral, their upkeep, and then Lavinia first. I mean, their hand is not very good. Obviously, if they draw Black Lotus, they do win, though. So there's some upside. I'm surprised. Yeah, I guess they didn't want to get taxiing because they wanted to not exile their Brain Freeze Indication if they needed to. I guess that makes sense. I think this is a reasonable spot for us. If if we can do something like... Oh, those are definitely magic cards. I was kind of hoping for Moxin so that I could go Lavinia, Mox, Mana Vault, Time Vault, uh, Null Rod. Um, drawing a Force would have been good. Agreed. Agreed. That would have been quite reasonable. I mean, they're not going to be able to combo us through a Magistrate or a Lavinia, so I think we'll be okay. It's just we're playing on curve, which is not exactly great. Ooh, them drawing an Urza Saga, quite good here. I must admit, drawing an Urza Saga, quite good for them here. We do have a Teferi to do some work, and we have a Lauren. I guess we can do Lauren on Saga this turn if we feel like compelled to do so. We could theoretically play Island, Soul Ring, Mana Vault, Lauren, Null Rod. If we wanted to jam everything. We could play Island, Soul Ring, Mana Vault, Uba Mask, Tyranith Magistrate. And then just deal with the Saga one turn from now. And if they counter the Tyranith, the Uba Mask, then we can slam Null Rod. There's a lot of reasonable options here. Though, no, most notably, if they do counter Soul Ring with Negation, things are quite bad for us. But I think we need to get deploy multiple cards this turn, so... So I, I really would like my Null Rod to resolve, so I think I'm just going to bait the Negation with the Uba Mask. And if... No, I guess baiting the Negation with the Uba Mask is, like, kind of bad... Because then I can't play Mana Straight after anyways. So I guess we'll just go with get my Null Rod countered. Or I could just drop a Magistrate this turn. And that will let them make a Saga token next turn. But we can just beat a Saga token with Teferi and Lauren. And then we, get, we can use a ton of blue mana. So maybe that's just fine. 
Because this will stop them from, like, ripping a breach combo as well. This just deploys our mana, and then next turn we have so much mana, we can just go Lavinia to turn off their negation, uh, or even Teferi Null Rod, and we can even bounce, we can put, we can do anything. I think everything is just going to be winning. Like, even if they take a whole turn here and they make a Saga token, do we even care? I, I don't think we care. We're going to have two blue mana and three blue mana and a white mana. What, is, what are they doing? They're just casting Brain Freeze? Sure. The fact that they can't breach us anyways should just make this not matter, right? So Magistrate actually looks kind of reasonable here. I mean, they're going to be heavily incentivized to make Saga tokens too. Well, the problem is we can't Lavinia and Lauren in the same turn. Oh, they probed us. Interesting. They finally let that loose. We can't play Lavinia and Lauren in the same turn, right? That's kind of annoying. But we can play Lavinia and Nullrod. And then we still can deal with two Construct tokens using Lauren and Teferi. And if we play Lavinia, we can play Uba Mask and lock them out, right? Oh, they ripped Black Lotus. It's a good thing we played our Draneth Magistrate. Wow. <laughs> nice draw, opponent. No, they drew Lightning Bolt Black Lotus? That's incredible. That is, that's unbelievable. I, I actually lose this game. My opponent ripped exactly Black Lotus Lightning Bolt after brain freezing themselves for 12. That is unbelievable. Wow. Okay. I mean, I did, I just needed another Moxon. It's kind of what... So that way I could have actually played Lavinia Null Rod in the... But, yeah, I mean, that's just pretty unlucky, I would think. I don't think I want to bring in Soul Guide Lantern. I just have Null Rods. So, they, they, they did add Breach combo to the deck, so there's a little extra layer there. Hmm. I thought we were extremely likely to win that game. They couldn't even draw like a Pyroblast, right? Because a Pyroblast would have beat Levin like dealt with a Lavinia, but it would not have dealt with a um Tyranith Magistrate. I guess theoretically. We could have played our Null Rod off of our Mana Vault, making them Negation Pitching Probe, and then they wouldn't have had the extra card to draw. But that just seems bad when I have an uncounterable Null Rod coming the next turn, right? It's not even like they can draw, you know, two common cards in their deck. It's probably something like one Black Lotus, one or two Lightning Bolts. Maybe three lightning bolts at tops. Yeah, I don't think my play was wrong. I think it was just quite sad. Mm. 
wish we weren't sideboarding for the full three minutes, but that is part of the magic online. All right, on the play. Hopefully we have something strong again. We do have turn one Tinker. However, my deck is not very good at using turn one Tinker. So... I think the answer is just going to be Cavern on Human, play Magistrate. I could have put a Citadel on this deck. I chose not to. I think most of the time, unless we have turn one Tinker, we're casting Tinker for our lock piece. Okay. So theoretically, next turn, we could also Tinker for a Knowledge Pool and cast uh, a Ruby to cast a spell out of the knowledge pool. And this also is a lock with knowledge pool, right? Because they can cast a spell from their hand, but they won't be able to do anything with it. So there's still games to be played here. However, it's less likely my Tinker is going to resolve. <laughs> my my buddy's got haywire mites every time. Come on now. <laughs> this is a one of haywire mite. Oh, what? They're just going for it? Uh, okay. So, we just jam, right? This sure looks like a jam moment to me. Wow. Come on, opponent. Oh, all right. They have force. They're just going to untap and slam Volky, huh? Yeah, they had a force. All right. I don't know. I could have cleared the way, but is this not exactly clearing the way if I, like, take a force of will, right? Oh, it is clearing the way because it's alternate cost is only from hand. All right. Well, maybe that was terrible. <laughs> maybe that was horrible play then. What card did they pitch? They pitched a brain freeze. Wild. We should just play the Spellbinder, and, like, if we die on this turn, we die on this turn, right? It would have been better. I think that was pretty, uh... Are they going to PO? All right. We are so dead in this game. Opponent threw a, a Haywire Might at a, at a Mox, and we're still going to lose this game. <laughs> Alright, probably want to draw a land. So we can play Spellbinder, at least. Oh, I also have a Dranith Magistrate, so this is actually just getting rid of a card in their hand, right? I'm so bad. I should just have done the Spellbinder play, gotten rid of the... Alright, well... Never mind. All right, so I just take the Merchant Scroll, leave them with Force Breach. Breach is turned off because of my Magistrate. They have a Mana Crypt in play. This is fine. My opponent drew three forces before I drew a single one in all, any of my games. How is that possible? They also won two Crypt Flips. Wait, they might not have one two crit flips because they did have a haywire might. So maybe they lost last crit flip, crit flip. No, they won both crit flips. I 
Well, actually, Spellbinder removing a force is actually fine because they can't cast the force using the alternate cost or they can't cast the force with Dreadnought Magistrate. So if they just had one force, that would actually would have worked. Unfortunately, they didn't have just one force, so... I think I put Counter Magic in the deck. I just put some forces in my deck. I thought about putting more things, but... It's okay, my opponent has three dead cards in hand, and I have four power on play. Well, if they had one force at the time, and then they draw two forces off of PO, and then they force my Tinker, it's the same outcome, right? Same outcome, get a... Well, it's probably just getting Lurus in their hand, right? Yeah. Okay, alright, we're on the tempo game plan. Maybe I should have played, like, a ton of Elite Spellbinders. Kind of seems reasonable. They should probably just force my Ponder. Knowledge pool, not the best draw. How about like a Lavinia? I feel like Lavinia couldn't hurt. I kind of think they're just supposed to force it. They are going to force it. Force of will, pitching force of will on my ponder. You got it, homie. All right, maybe they'll lose a crit flip. So, how does Paulo work if the Paulo dies? Does the card doesn't go back to their hand, right? Actually, I've not played very much Paulo. Just stays in exile. All right. So my opponent ripped a, a black source to play their Luris. <laughs> they they ripped Mox Jet to play Luris, which is uh. Well, that's a thing you can do. They also won another Crypt Flip. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're going to draw Teferi and, and bounce Luris. It'll be grand. I hate this game. Well, it's a 3-2 lifelinker, right? So... That's a problem. I don't think I want to trade either. I make my opponent tack back. They won four flips. Make my opponent tack back means I'm doing one damage plus crypt flip every turn. I mean, how long before they top deck something good though? They actually had Hardcast Force now. Ooh, Narset, you say? Pretty sure that's a cast angle. They have Underworld Breach and one unknown. And then I think I am going to sit so I don't lose my Teferi. <laughs> Dranith Magistrate, Dranith Magistrate, Elite Spellbinder, Tundra. Unlucky. <laughs> we didn't do this to ourselves in deck building. Trust me. Oh, they have unblockable, right? I should just attack. Man, that sucks. It's not worth it to, like, hold back and make them use it, right? I don't think it is. All right, so the Narset did nothing except clear four, four, three creatures off the top of my library. I was hoping it would replace itself with a blue spell. They won the fifth flip out of five. They've won every single flip. I guess I do need to hold back because of Time Vault, right? Because if they draw Time Vault, 
then I don't want them to be able to attack with Luris infinitely. So actually, I should hold my Spellbinder back. That's kind of interesting. I didn't really consider that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to hold this Spellbinder back, actually, and hope they lose some Crypt Flips. Except they've won six out of six Crypt Flips. What? <laughs> How is that possible? If we lose both of these games, one because they flipped seven perfect flips and one because they drew Lotus <laughs> Bolt, I mean, it looks bad for me. I'm not going to lie to you. If I had one half of those flips, they'd be at three. Uh, I have tons of removal for Luris. I play four Teferis in my deck. The Luris also doesn't do anything in terms of Haywire Might, so... Like, I'm doing damage to my opponent. My opponent attacking, gaining three, and I'm attacking for four. Like, why would I trade? Also, they can do this. So now, not only did I not do three damage, but they also gained three life back. I I will be. I, I have booked my ticket to that event. All right, maybe we'll draw Black Lotus and slam Knowledge Pool. So I guess I just should be attacking because they can just gain life back anyways yeah so i guess i should have just attacked i lost three damage here my opponent technically can clock me out too like f <laughs> with the stupid key they've won seven of seven crip flips <laughs> what? this is complete nonsense they have drawn all mana, so I guess I should be thankful for some things. I think I'm just going to lose this game because my opponent won every crit flip out of seven. Oh... <laughs> Are we serious? They have an Odawara? All right. Awesome. So they can go what? Underworld Breach PO? So we let Breach resolve and then force the PO. Is that better than just forcing it and then no, they can replay it. So we have to let Breach resolve. I can't believe they have an Odawara. This deck's mana must be the worst thing of all time. How is there an island and an Odawara? Oh, they cast the Merchant Scroll. Because they bounced the Dranith Magistrate, and now they can play the Merchant Scroll. So... They still have the ability to lure us back a Lotus this turn. So they have six mana... Are we just dead? If we force this, then they go Lotus, Breach, Lotus, Merchant Scroll, Brain Freeze. I think they have exactly enough mana to do everything. 
And if we let this resolve and counter breach, they just replay breach off of... No, I can counter the breach, right? No, they just re they just count they just play breach second here and then they just replay the breach with Luris. I mean they might time out doing this to be honest, but wait, they got Flusterstorm. Can you do that? I guess. Yeah, they have exactly sevens, but this is non-deterministic. They're going to go for Breach P.O. Or I guess they have Merchant Scroll and Flusterstorm back. Okay, yeah, never mind. It's still deterministic. I guess they were just both deterministic because they have so much mana that they can Merchant Scroll again no matter what. What a disgusting game of Magic the Gathering. Like, they can't draw any Lightning Bolt or, like, they can't draw any removal spell because I have Force and Misstep. But they have an, a random Odawara. I don't think I can be unluckier than this. Yeah, so nothing I do matters here. I should just concede. Like, they might time out, but... Am I really going to make them do that? I don't think so. Even if they go for P.O., I guess P.O. with Flusterstorm is still probably winning. They're going to go P.O.? What, what if I had Force with Flusterstorm back up? I don't know. Whatever. All right, chat, are we waiting three minutes or are we conceding? There's no mistakes. It's just, can they play fast enough? No, we, there, there was no point in which we could have paid for the Flusterstorm. Make them do it for all the Crip wins. Actually, it shouldn't take them very long because they have Merchant Scroll plus PO plus Storm Count. They're actually going to be able to do it, no problem. Well, I mean, they didn't really play at a very fast pace during the course the whole course of the match, so. If they had to, like, perform a normal Brain Freeze combo on themselves, I would... What are they doing? I guess they returned the breach to their hand. They just wasted their 20 storm. Couldn't they have just brain freezed us? Like replay all your mocks in, replay breach. Oh wait, did they exile their brain freeze? Oh, I think they exiled their one brain freeze. That's why. Okay, so I was supposed to Did I did I mess up? Could I have done something different then? If I had forced their merchant scroll Well, their merchant scroll just got them a fluster storm. Uh I'm trying to figure out if I could have done something differently knowing they didn't have a brain freeze. I 
I needed to keep back my Spellbinder, by the way, because of this. I mean, they can go... That doesn't actually stop them, right? They have Demonic, so they can go Breach, Demonic uh, for Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt my Spellbinder, so that doesn't matter. So it's just if I could have forced the breach and paid, which I don't think I could have. Also, it didn't show the storm count on my screen, so I actually have no idea. I don't know why the storm count's not showing when there's a fluster storm in their deck, but. Looks like they'll win with like two seconds. Oh, they have to tap this time vault. I, I think they're actually going to lose. Wow. Doesn't feel good. But I am 15 on clock, so. All right, let's hopefully play some magic, not play some clock. What do we got? What do we got? We got the... Ooh, we got the turn one Lavinia. Okay. All right. Okay. What do I think of the Lord of the Rings expansion? Like, what about it? What in... What in... In... in what specific part of the Lord of the Rings expansion uh, do you want to hear about? Ancient Tomb Pass. Ancient Tomb Pass. Can I draw a blue card or a cavern? Blue card or cavern? Blue card or cavern? Blue card or cavern? Blue card or cavern? Or blue card or cavern? Let's go. Oh, no. There's definitely good cards in it. Like, uh, I think Bowmaster is extremely playable in Vintage. Probably good, I would say. I don't know what the home for Bowmaster will be yet, but I think it's definitely going to be a vintage playable card. Uh, I think the One Ring is very playable. Mistress Workshop is a hell of a drug. Oh, no. The opponent is actually playing Mono White, but they kept a seven-card hand that didn't play a turn one spell. I kind of hate it. I mean, I think it's going to end badly for us, but... We're, I think we're super dead here, if I had to guess. I thought my opponent was on shops, but my opponent was a mono-white player who kept turn two uncounterable initiative as their play. I didn't really expect that, to be honest. So if I draw exactly swords to plowshares, I think we'll be fine. If not, we we'll probably just go next. Because, like, I can play Uba Mask right now, but that doesn't actually do anything. So, just ponder for a swords. Cavern, misstep, emerald. None of that does anything either. I mean, it lets me play a spellbinder this turn. Maybe I just need to keep that and do that. That's a, that's Apollo, friend. That is a PV. They have a... Um, they have a Solitude. We just can't beat that, probably. Oh, wait, no. We have, we have a Lavinia. So we can beat a Solitude. Nice. They do have a Solitude. All right, cool. They have two solitudes. Uh, wait, so this might work. This might work. So they make a 5-5. Five, five. I mean, we're just losing the race, though. I guess the vigilancing 
three three is their best card. Though if they Lauren are Emerald, it's pretty bad. I don't know. It's all pretty bad. Uh okay. So I mean Lavinia did do something against Solitude. That's kind of nice. But I don't think we have game against the rest of this. Honestly, kind of surprised they kept this hand. Do you think this mono white hand is good enough in the blind on the play to keep on seven? Like turn two uncounterable initiative or turn two uncounterable Lauren or turn two uncounterable Thalia? Like that's not good enough. They drew another white plume adventure. Awesome. All right. My deck is notably weak to initiative creature or initiative creature, so. It's okay. We got a tinker for a portal post board. Let's, let's wrap it up here. Definitely needed a die roll here. A die roll would have been nice. All right, so we're going to bring in Portal. And... Swords. And probably Sphinx. And then we're going to take out... Um, mental... Well... Mental misstep. Probe. Twister mask pool. That's just a whole bunch of nonsense. I guess. It's probably fine. Don't really see any reason to null rod when we have Lavinia. And then don't really see any reason we would ever tinker for pool when we have tinker for portal or sphinx. I guess twister on the play is like better. I mean, it's gotta be better than Narset. Never mind. It's gotta be better than Narset. Though it does lose our combination with Narset. Unfortunately, I don't think we have enough cards here for this to be good. But. Yeah, I think this is just how we're going to have to play it. Hmm. All right, let's try this again on the play. That'll help. We've got one, two, three, four, five mana. I mean, it's probably just Mox, Lotus, Twister. I feel like we just make them have a random seven cards and we start with a Mox and a Cavern in play. That kind of just feels like the best idea. It does put us in trap range, but I think that's acceptable. Like, I don't, I don't think waiting a turn is good. If we had... No, I think this is fine. We'll just do this. And then we'll Twister, and we'll leave ourselves with a blue, a Cavern, get a fresh one. And nice, we hit uh, Lavinia. Turn off their fast mana. So hold this Emerald. Okay. 
Ancient Tomb. It's a pretty good start into Lavinia. Are they going to Null Rod me? I think I'd be totally okay with that. Time Walk. I think this is going to have to be a Tundra. Okay, so I I have I don't know. I have I have magic cards in play, that's for sure. I definitely have magic cards in play. They they have conceded. I guess it's true. It's true. You can't cast an old rod off one land. Man, Lavinia is something, huh? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I guess ke keeping Twister instead of Narset was uh, a good call. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll do that again. I don't think we can do that again. <laughs> Oh my, oh my. All right, well, let's hope we don't get murdered too badly on the first turn here. Let's also hope my opponent doesn't play a Chancellor. We can. We have to do a lot of hoping, I think, but it's probably worth keeping. the The amount of uh, upside here is is quite high, so I think it's probably just worth it. Like, there's a lot of ways we just lose, obviously, but I think that's fine. I think we don't get to keep Tinker Ancestral Lotus very often, so. And they have been known to keep Ancient Tomb Go, so. All right, well, now they have Pearl Sapphire. Uncounterable Archon. Uncounterable Human. Uncounterable Human. Oh. Well, Peacekeeper making my Lotus cost two more is going to be an issue, so. Man, this is they they keep this? I guess I would keep it because I have Moxin, but Anointed Peacekeeper is like that might be the actual worst possible one you can play on turn one, right? It's good here though. It's good exactly here, unless I draw fetch land. <laughs> All right. All right, so what's my play now? What is my play now? Is it just Ancestral? Probably not, right? It's probably just Swords Lotus go, and then we won't Ancestral. Cause I can't Tinker. I think we can just pass. Also have the ability to counter counter non-humans as well. Ancient tomb go? Ancient tomb go? That's the world we're living in? Uh, uh all right. Well, how do I want to what do I want to do here? Um I don't know. I don't even know what I want a mystical for. I have my tinker in my hand. I guess we're just going to go Talarian Ancestral. And then maybe we'll play Lavinia Magistry. That way they can't solitude it super easily. I guess we can go Crypt Double Magistrate. And then we can Tinker next turn if we need to. I used both the white mana. All right, well, that's unfortunate. Little, a little bit of a misclicker. clicker. 
Man, I'm sad I can't tinker for knowledge pool now. I, ca I really wish I could tinker for knowledge pool. I guess I can just tinker for Uba Mask. So next turn I have one, two, three, four, five mana. So I can play Manager Straight and Tinker for Uber Uba Mask. And then I still can Mystical for Swords. So I think we're winning. Bone didn't have anything to play last turn. I think so. I think Boromir should see some amount of play in Mono White. I mean, it's better than Anointed Peacekeeper. Like, every card is better than Anointed Peacekeeper. I'm very questioning the, the hands my opponent kept, but it's possible they were correct. All right, so my opponent's passed again. So I believe now we should do the... What if I play blue, white, to fairy, bounce my mana crypt, tinker? that better blue white fairy bounce my mana crypt tinker i could have bounced their pearl huh i should have bounced their pearl oh we actually have almost have displacer kitten combo wow Let's just get an Uba Mask. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? We're here for Uba Mask, not Displacer Kitten combo. Hopefully they don't concede to this. I want to tinker for Uba Mask. If we, if we get a tinker to resolve here, it means we've tinkered for Knowledge Pool and Uba Mask, which is a pretty good set of cards to have tinkered for. All right. So if my opponent doesn't have any answers in their hand, then every card they draw gets exiled face up and they can't cast it because it's they have a Dranith Magistrate in play. They had Solitudes. Lavinia was just stopping a pile of Solitudes. And Lavinia was stopping Chrome Mox. Wow. So they kept this hand off the back of turn one anointed peacekeeper plus solitudes. There's like no shot I would ever keep that hand, right? Like my opponent, I know my opponent is quite reasonable at the game and I know they're 3-0, but I, I don't like the hands my opponent kept in these games. Okay, moving on to Absorbent 3, who is the most prepared player for any kind of artifact-based combo. I have to send this one back. Uh, we're going to have to send this one back. I guess we have Mystical for your Ancestral, which is uh, definitely something... <laughs> they have uh, just a lot of artifact removal and oofs. Ooh, Elvish Spirit Guide pitching for Fable. I love it. I'm a big Fable fan. Nice hand. Very nice hand. And they fix their mana with their treasure token here. We're so doomed. We really are doomed. Our hand was not very good, but I feel like we had to mulligan to what we had. Pitching an endurance for one card. Okay. Besage you. Okay. Attack play a, a boo. God, attack play a boo is way too good. For someone who hates artifacts, they always have a lot of mocks in, I must admit. The classic 
collector roof deck. Okay, Tarmogoyf I can beat. Tarmogoyf I can beat. So I, unfortunately, I think I am priced into Mystical for Ancestral here, which is not really a place I want to be in life, but could have been worse, I guess. Could got besieged. Okay, Tundra, Mana Vault, okay. How close are we to like a Displacer Kit in combo? That costs about a million mana, right? All right, so the Reflection is flipped. They have an Abundant Harvest. Abundant Harvest hits an Endurance. Okay. This is five damage. I'm at... Okay. I mean, so far, I mean, I'm just, I think they have an oof possibly in their hand. They actually can hard cast endurance off of treasure tokens. We might be able to sneak a, a cheeky kitten win in this game. Hit a land drop, time walk, hit like a moxin. Like a white moxin or something. Or any color moxin, right? Oh, Force of Vigor. Pitching Endurance, I should have known. All right. Never mind. So now... Now how do we win? Um... It's a very... Mm, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see the way out here, unfortunately. I'm not going to show them anything besides the blue power. Maybe they'll board in too much artifact stuff. So I, I am going to bring in Portal and Sphinx. And then I'm going to bring in th the full set of Swords to Plowshares. And we're going to take out the Narset, the Knowledge Pool, the Uba Mask. I'm going to leave in Mental Misstep. Take out Lauren. Take out... Second Uba Mask. I just don't have a, a high faith in the Uba Mask plan against them. But maybe that's too much. Maybe we just go down. Let's just go two and and oh, you want to go one and one? Well, the problem is, like, I'm never hard casting Knowledge Pool against my opponent's deck, and I'm, I'm never tinkering for it over... i almost never tinkering for it over this. So, I think this is fine. My opponent's just, like, a, a very awkward scenario where they are just super overgeared for artifacts. You just don't think this hand is... Maybe this hand is fine with Lavinia... I mean, I think they're on like one fable, one Sylvan library. Like, I, I normally it's just not actually useful to attack their their deck like in that in that manner because of the way they configure their deck. So it's like all one of some um, red green deck. I I just fetched a basic. Man, you know. Really? I guess I technically could have cast Kitten there. Maybe that would have been good. Yeah. I don't know. It felt like kind of bad. But it might be good here if I go, I don't know, I still don't have a, a flicker option. Let's see. Oh man. I guess I should have kept in Lauren. All 
All right. So, like, to fairy, maybe? No. I think I'm just going to time walk. Because if I were to go, I wouldn't be able to. The fucker doesn't do anything, anyways. Really looking for a Teferi. I have four. I'm just going to get murdered by this Sylvan library. Just wanted to attack their life total a little bit. The good news is this like slows down a possible boo for a turn. How are we playing a Bayou in this deck? Treetop Village? Free top village Tarmogoyf, huh? All right, so still looking for Teferi. Just can't win, huh? We drew a lot of lands in this game. If I draw Teferi and... Uh, bounce anything, swords, flicker my Teferi, bounce mana vault, draw through my deck, right? That's why I put the Displacer Kitten in this deck to give us at least some kind of avenue forward. I'm just gonna hold this because. I just want to be able to win with a Teferi off the top with four Teferis in my deck. Man, it's just not happening. It's not even like they're manipulating this library with fetches. They're down to four life. Taiga. Stand up treetop village. Like, what's happening? Mog's Crusher. If I counter it, I put two things in my yard. But if I don't counter it, they can possibly stop my combo. Yeah, I think I just have to let that resolve. Take another hit. All right, still just looking for a Teferi. I guess this does something. Mind Break Trap, Pyroblast, Vigor. <laughs> what do I have in play? Just Lavinia. The 
problem is... I think I'm going to have to blink. I Actually, they're at four. They could just die to the Spellbinder. But the Swords is kind of annoying, right? They drew Boo? Man. Maybe they're going to try to fling Blue at Spellbinder. They are going to try to fling Blue at Spellbinder. Okay. I could have forced it. How could I have forced it? Oh, Swords the Oof and Pay? I think that's bad. Like, I, I want to be able here, I can blink my Spellbinder. But maybe I won't be able to tempo at this point. But I can attack the ooh, the meta the the boo. Oh, maybe I was. Maybe I was supposed to do that. This puts me, like, really far from actually killing them, right? But more... Oh. Well, that's game-winning. Uh, it's better to do it first. They're going to be able to kill this. But, um, portaling their board looks pretty good. Okay, yeah, I mean, actually, they can't kill this portal unless they draw a land to cast uh, six mana vigor, which they can do if they have a land, but then they die on board. Okay, well, I guess all of my land drop draws made are made up for with one tinker draw. They don't have Besaju in hand. They have... Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Just clearing the board is fine. Well, everything worked out there. But maybe I just do need to have this Lauren in my deck in case they play Sylvan Library. Maybe I'll just play... I just, like, I'm very skeptical of Uba Mask actually working here, but... Maybe just there's just too many Lavinias anyways. All right, well, Kitten was good there. And Kitten let me present Lethal to Fairy as well. So. All right, can we come back? One game three. What do we got? What do we got? We've got Uncounterable and Force. We don't want to mask into Sylvan. Uh, I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't. I, I think they have one Sylvan library in their deck, so I really don't want to play around Sylvan library as the end all be all here. 
wish I had. I guess I'm supposed to just play Lavinia, right? Instead of, well, no, I kind of want to have Force. I'm just going to play a Draineth Magistrate. I'm not going to play this Pearl out because I'm pretty worried. Oh, I think I have to play this Pearl out because of oof. It's kind of frustrating. What is this? This is a Seed of Hope. Mill two cards, put a permanent from the milled cards into your hand. Oh, so they get an Ignoble Hierarch or a Beseju. Okay. They put an ignoble hierarch in their hand. So I don't want to play my pearl into collector oof. Sorry, I want to play my pearl in case of collector oof, but I don't want to play my pearl in case of vigor because I don't want to force a vigor. I guess I'm just going to hold. It's pretty bad if my opponent just jams an oof here. I guess I have force for an oof here, so I shouldn't be worried about that. Besage you. Oof. I mean, I have to force the oof, right? Because of the way I did this. I guess, theoretically, I could have played my pearl, let my things get blown up and forced anyways. I don't know. Ancestral? It's a good one, if I can cast it at some point here. I think at this point I do play the Pearl, though. So I guess I... Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to have to draw one of those Tundras that we drew last game. <laughs> we'll be fine. Seeds of Innocence? Yeah. We got a spirit guide for that. All right, just give me the fetch land. Fetch land, please. Oh my God, I drew Sapphire. <laughs> okay. All right, this doesn't trigger Mind Break Trap, so we're doing the casting. My opponent did what I expected them to do and boarded into a lot of artifact hate. Still can't cast any of our stuff, really, but I think that's okay. Tarmogoyf, I feel like we should let resolve and then draw swords. Or just draw land for swords. Oh, yeah, that works too. I mean, I, I think we drew unbelievably in this game. I would like to send your guys to Phyrexia. And then I want a Tarmogoyf of my own. This was really close. <laughs> this this set of games was quite close. Which maybe doesn't bode well for our future here, but... We kind of have been riding a serious tinker high in this league so far. Which I guess is a good recipe for success. Like, whoa, are they going to endurance their graveyard in response? Uh, Yeah, this is a little late to be vigoring. Uh, I think that's just fine. Like the only other creatures in the yard are Oof and Hierarch. 
Oh, no, no. This is not Seed Time. This is Seeds of Innocence. Those are two very different cards. Boo? Slam a damn it. Boo was probably the greatest thing for Absorbent 3's win rate of all time. Like, just a completely broken, accelerated red green planeswalker. All right. You need an answer for Tarmogoyf. Bet you didn't, bet you didn't see that coming. A Tarmogoyf win. The dream. <laughs> Three wins in a dream. Okay, here we go. Three and oh. I've got a turn two uncounterable Lavinia and a probe and kitten to fairy. On the draw? I don't think I'm allowed to put it back, but I'm not thrilled. Like, the draw with Probe, if we hit a Moxin, we set ourselves up to do Tinker thing or uh, to Fairy Kitten things. We do have Lavinia uncounterably on turn two. I think this is fine. Ancient Tomb. Oh, we're dead. We're not dead? All right, well, now we need to find a Force or a, a Pearl or a Sapphire or a Petal or a Lotus. So we have eight hits in 53. Oh, wait, maybe we're dead. Oh, never mind. We're back to being dead. <laughs> Man, Soul Ring is such a good draw, too. Soul Ring is such a good draw, too, because that would just let us really accelerate what we were doing. I guess, to be fair, we technically can't cast this to Fairy, but... All right, we're definitely got a jewel opponent. I just need to hit land drop, please. Oh, we were doing it. All right, we really do need to hit land drop. If we hit land drop, this game still feels playable because, I mean, if my opponent goes workshop jewel, we die, right? But if we hit land drop and go uncounterable Lavinia, I feel like we have we still have game here. Though I guess I don't stop a lot of things because of the Trinisphere tax, but this doesn't feel lost yet. Spin is good for us. Okay, come on. Can we just hit? We have how many lands left in our deck? Thir we have 13 minus Talarian, so 12 lands, 12 out of 51. It's not a good chance, but I just feel like if we can resolve a Lavinia, we can still play this game. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Land, 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 not Academy. Let's go. I think this one has to be Lavinia to start to prevent our opponent from playing broken cards. They are uh, only one, two lands away from a uh, Mightstone weak stone. They can also hit us back with a um, Lavinia of their own off of Metamorph. But we have follow up to fairies. Like we could go to fairy, bounce the Trinisphere, Lotus Soul Ring, and then if we hit a mock, then we have like Blink Soul Ring with. Pro, no, that's not how it works. Yeah, I mean that is how that works. Bring soul ring with probe, or bring to fairy with probe. Okay, so now they do have Lavinia Trinisphere, but we have to fairy bounce Lavinia attack. I think we might just win this game. Because they're going to be at 10 to replay Metamorph, cost them an additional 4 life. I 
and then they'll go to uh, six. So I bounce it again, and they go to four. I think we just bounce it again. I guess I can attack and then play a second Lavinia. That is probably better. Lavinia is just that good. Lavinia is just that good. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, okay. And we know it's Jewel. So we get to bring in Null Rod. Maybe we play Hercules. It's possible. And then we want to take out Swords. Maybe Mist Up. Um, maybe Twister. And... Maybe a magistrate. Maybe it's just a spellbinder. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. The Lavinia dot deck. I, I think any deck that just plays fast mana lavinia and cavern is probably just fine right just reasonably playable deck that was a weird game though my opponent played turn one turn sphere oh I don't have a force in this hand, but I think it's just a keep. Well, the thing is, like, when you make a donation necklace, you want to do the thing, right, MJ? And the thing is definitely do the mask, so. All right, well, my opponent's going to turn one kill me. So, unfortunately, my turn one Lavinia hand was not good enough. Hope we draw force if we get a turn. Really don't think we're getting a turn because they can play a jewel here. Man, this deck is so broken. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm never mulliganing this hand, even without a force. Like, I just have to keep this. If my opponent class turn one kill me, then so be it. I mean, they had workshop, restricted, 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 opal, ancestral. PO back everything but Jewel. This means they have another PO, right? I'm kind of sad because maybe we could have had this hand on the play and things would have been even better. Untap Jewel, play Jewel. Tinker for Jewel, sure. Oh, this is. It's not a Tinker Volt key yet. Shut the Tinker for Jewel, I guess. Man, sad Justin. All right. Uh, all right. Well, hopefully our we have the same hand where we can open it with turn one Lavinia and make our opponent lose the most interactive and fun magic. If I can just be blessed with a nice turn one uncounterable Lavinia, that's all I ask for. Yeah, like I said, I, I mean, I'm always keeping my hand, and if they turn one kill me, they turn one kill me. What am I going to do? It's not like I play like eight Forces of Wills, or, you know.
there's not much uh things that go on when one player is on jewel the game just kind of devolves into a oops all spells battle and they do the thing or they don't do the thing All right, on the play, turn one on counter Lavinia. Come on, come on, come on. Unfortunately, turn one uncounterable Magistrate is probably just not it. We even had the Sapphire, too. All right, try again. Turn one Null Rod. Yeah, we're doing it. So if I bottom the soul ring, I can actually go ponder for a force. Is that good? Or is it better to just bottom mana crypt and go tundra, soul ring, null rod? Like, and I can't mystical for ancestral. I could theoretically go um, bottom soul ring. I don't really want to bottom planes, but planes doesn't really do anything. So I guess it's fine. I think I'm going to ponder for a force. Found a force. And so... I'll leave cavern on top and then can choose whether to draw cavern or t something else. This does make me play mana crypt out, but I can get mental misstepped if I play this soul ring. I think that's something I don't want to do. I feel like bottoming soul ring was better than bottoming planes, but. They had the force, which means this game's going to be pretty long because my top cards are all real bad. Probably just died a saga, right? Force pitch PO. I actually had to ponder into a force for this to resolve. It's crazy. Workshop. Pass. Crypt. I mean... My opponent won seven crypt flips today. Maybe I, I, I already lost the first one. I can't even make a joke about it. I probably am not supposed to play the soul ring because then I can hold it for something. All right, they have no follow up land. Lost another crypt flip. I'm going to hold that one. To fairy can't cast that one. Ancient tomb. Now they just need to draw a saga and we lose. They can also just like play the draw two. Lost another crit flip. All right. So if this resolves, I can at least bounce my crit back to my hand. I don't know if that's what I actually want to do, but it definitely what I'm going to do if it resolves. Nope, did not resolve. They had another force. That's like half the blue cards in my opponent's deck. All right, Crypt Flip. This is going to be a sad loss. But it wouldn't have worked out if I had just gone land, soul ring, no rod, so... Jewel draw three. A worm coil engine? We brought in worm coil engine? Good, get out of here. What a joke. 
What an actual joke. That's disgusting. You brought in Worm Coil Engine against the blue white deck. Whatever. <laughs> I can't believe this. Unbelievable. Yep, that's sure as hell of a way to go. Could not really have drawn worse. Okay, here we go. Fifth and final round with our Uba Mask deck. We've got double Cavern of Souls, double Planeswalkers that cost blue, white, blue, blue. This was something I was worried about. I don't have I do have Tinker Time Walk though. Man, if one of these was a fetch land, it would just be the easiest keep of my life. Oh, I'm going to put it back. Pay the price for putting four Cavern of Souls in the deck. All these cards are quite good. I think I'd rather have a Teferi, even though I have a, like a, a Magistrate to, um, combo for a Spellbinder. I think I just, because I'm not playing the Dranath Magistrate on turn one anyways, and I'd like to play the Teferi on turn two. So. I really think Jewel was like the absolute best matchup for this deck in the format, so it's very frustrating to lose anyways. What are you gonna do? That's kinda that kinda happens all the time. I feel like all of my decks are good duo matchups, and then you still lose some amount just because of how broken the cards are. Alright. Lavinia Saga. No, that's not gonna work for you, friend. So I'm not gonna bounce the saga. Well, now I'm probably gonna bounce the saga. I wasn't going to bounce the Saga because there's no way for them to make a Construct without having an Ancient Tomb, but... Jewel hitting double Force of Will is actually just unreasonable. Because it's unreasonable for it to cast the first Force of Will. It can, like, effectively cast the first Force of Will, like, less than half the time it actually has a Force of Will in hand, which is less than half the time. The jewel deck defies math. Turn one combo decks can't really be hated. I, I mean, that's not true. You can play Vine Break Traps and there are eight Force of Will effects in the format. Like, you can play more... Like, I can play more cards to not die on turn one. I could have mulliganed my game two hand so that I had a Force in my hand, which is not an unreasonable thing to do. The th problem is I'm not going to, like... I'm never going to dis to do that when my my existing hand is turn one Lavinia against a deck that completely folds to Lavinia. So, and like they don't always have turn one kill. They're not like always a turn one deck. They're like a turn you know one and a half deck. They don't though. Like they have Force of Will in their deck, yes, but they don't have enough blue sources to reliably cast Force of Will. So they can lucky into a Force of Will blue card. That can happen, but they don't reliably cast it. They're on like 16, I think, blue cards in their deck. Sometimes they play like 15. This hand's kind of bad. I'm just going to ship this. doesn't really do anything. This hand is also kind of bad, but I don't know what my opponent's playing, and I have a mental misstep. I think it's fine. Well, I do know they have Saga em Emerald, right? So maybe just some kind of Saga deck. Though my deck does not beat Saga. I probably should have brought in a Hercules or something. Oh. 
All right, well, we're going to have to draw have to draw away to Lauren, or we are very dead to that. I should have brought in Null Rods, but I was too busy arguing with chat about dumb things. I mean, I'm not beating this no matter what I do now. Even if I draw Black Lotus, I'm still going to die to Construct Tokens. I guess I should just, like, see if I can get them to play. Whoa, they're playing Jewel. Okay. I guess it's good I didn't concede then. So they are playing Ancient Tomb. Okay, all right, all right. So I'll just concede to that. Uh, all right, well, now we know what's going on. We can board, actually, accordingly. Board in these Hercules. Board in these Null Rods. Uh, board out... What were we boarding out? We were boarding out misstep swords. Um Twister Mask. Something like that. Alright. So turn one. Like my opponent didn't turn one combo me in either of those two games. Um uh, I'm gonna mulligan this. Uh man. That's probably fine. Now the question is like, do I s wait or just slam Narset? Mm -mm, I think I'm just gonna slam Narset. That's not how this works. That is not a 5% difference. <laughs> Force of will. We're doomed. Saga gaming. Lots of saga gaming from the opponent. Don't think we're winning this one. Mm, that's kind of a nice one. I think just bouncing the Saga for a turn is, like, pretty good here. Uncounterable Tinker next turn, though. Wait, what, what do we have to Tinker for? We have Uba, Uba Mask and Knowledge Pool. What if we Knowledge Pool a Coveted Jewel? Wait, we have Teferi out. We we win. Teferi knowledge pool is the combo. No, no, we won. I'm gonna put a new Teferi in play. No, I could put a Dranith. I could do Ancestral, Dranith. I'll just cast Ancestral targeting me. Then I can play an Emerald and play a new Teferi. And I can bounce their Saga for fun. And then I can play a Null Rod and play a Dranith Magistrate. And then next turn I can play the Null Rod. Yeah. Oh, this is a good way to end the stream. I believe you have been locked out of the game, opponent. Thank you for playing. See, the real best six drop artifact in the format is actually Knowledge Pool. We were one win away from the 5 0. Actually, very sad. Tinkering for Knowledge Pool was quite good, actually. But I that might be more about the card Tinker than the card Knowledge Pool. 
we actually had a lot of fun tonight, but I, I do I do think we did run very hot. I, if I had to guess, like we cast how many tinkers tonight? We're not playing any. We're playing one tutor, and I don't think we ever tutored for tinker. I think we just naturally drew tinker like a lot of the time. Uh, did we even ever Uba mask our opponent? We had one game of Uba mask. We had one, and we, well, we had two games of Uba mask. We tinkered for Uba mask once. Well, like, that's the thing, though. Like, this deck is just unreal against Jewel. It's so good against Jewel. It can get a little bit better if you add, like, some negations, but losing to Jewel is very sad. But we did beat Jewel in the end, so small victories. I think the main takeaway I had from this league was Teferi is good. I've been playing Teferi in PO and Esper Saga, and it's been unreasonably good. I think Lavinia is unbelievably good right now, especially if you can cast it on turn one. And our deck is probably one of the best turn one Lavinia decks in the format. Uh, I, I do think that the whole Dranith Magistrate stuff is kind of bad. Um, but maybe there's a world where you can just play like the, the, the Displacer Kitten combo deck and just have a knowledge pool in your deck. I feel like that could be true. That could be something. Anyways, that was actually really fun. So thank you to uh, Senpai for donating this list. If you want to see your list played on my channel, I mean, we're playing Uba Mask Knowledge Pool, so the the gates have been opened a little bit. You can play some. You can recommend some uh, some serious bangers, uh, and I will definitely consider it. Um, information for that should be found in the description of this video. Just check a look at the Patreon page, and we can get something going. Uh, I hopefully will have Lord of the Rings videos coming in the near future, um, especially tomorrow night's stream, I hope, um, though they are quite expensive right now, so maybe we'll have to see what they look like. Until then, more vintage videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday. See you then.